initial line, we made mistakes. And I'm not ashamed to say that. We made slips. And why not? We are not perfect, or are we? So, in Manzil Meme, 1922, it was a custom that after dinner Baba would sit with the mandali and talk for some time and by eight o'clock everybody would knock off to bed. And there we had a ship's gong to call people or when the ship's gong went, come on, disperse. So on that particular day, Baba said, all right, go to bed. Enough is enough now. 8.30, go to bed. The last insta- last of Baba's orders. Well, the mandali dispersed. We had small coops, small partition rooms. Saros, Rustam, Adi, myself, Pendu, everybody just dispersed. Some goes to the bathroom, some goes to the water closet, some just talking. And uh, after about five minutes, the gong goes, summons, come on. We all assemble. What's wrong now? What's happened? Baba just stands there. We all stand at attention. He asked a question to one of the mandali, what were you doing? Baba was uh, washing my face. Next man, what were you doing? Baba had gone to the WC. Hmm. You, what were you doing? Baba was talking to such and such. Right. What did I tell you five minutes ago? Uh, we started fumbling. Uh, <laughs> Baba, you said go to bed. Then why are you not in bed? I told you to. You heard me. You said that, don't you? All right. Why are you not in bed? Why were you talking to such and such a man? Yes, Baba, our mistake. Look, when I give you any order, you shall follow it literally. I told you to go to bed, all right? Get straight into your cabin, unroll your bed, lie on it for five minutes, and get up again to attend to your needs. That would be following the order, literally. (laughs) Never, never do contrary to my orders. Remember that. Don't forget it. Now I'll give you another incident that happened in Happy Valley. Well, how to follow the master. We had been to Happy Valley where myself, Pendu, Bua Saheb, Rao Saheb and others got these nicknames. You asked me the question, how did I get it? I was known by my original name, Faridu, until then. Baba was talking then, naturally. And all of a sudden, he says, come on, let us give nicknames to these people. You see, in a jovial mood. See, the perfect masters are never, never frigid. They like jokes. Baba used to like jokes and he used to tell us to say something. He used to enjoy that. So, he calls all the mandali. Now, yes, this man. What should you call him? Somebody suggests something, some something, some something. My name comes later. Before that, Baba was, when he saw me, he used to beat his tempo on the uh, handle of the easy chair, whistle, and used to call out Padra, Padra, I used to call him. I used to answer back G, G. He used to look at me. He's saying that, just out of fun, I answered him. Then he said, Fardun becomes Padri. All right. Then Aspandiar is Pendu. Suggest a name something for this. So uh, Jal, Baba's brother, suggests the name Pendu Lam. So short is Pendu. In like manner, three or four, four of us got the nickname. That was in Happy Valley. 
During that time, we had stayed, we had plenty of time, we stayed for eight days or nine days in Happy Valley. Baba used to mingle freely with us. We used to have some games or something, play cards, whatever it, whatever that be. One afternoon at about three o'clock, I was just on the veranda and looked across the wall, just opposite the veranda, the front veranda, there is a Mahadev temple, the temple of the bull and Mahadev. In that temple I see two people of the Mandali sitting and pestering or talking to that keeper of the temple. I also had an itch to go there, and I do go there. I had hardly been there about, say, four or five minutes. Baba comes on the veranda, sees over the wall, and asks one of the Mandali present, who are those people there? Call them. Call them here. One was myself, the other was Gustaji's brother, called Slamson, a very mischievous one who would like to, who liked to pester people a great deal. <coughs> and third, I forget. <coughs> anyway, I, we all come back. Stand at attention. Baba is standing there. What were you doing there? Baba was just sitting there. He asked me. <coughs> I was just sitting and listening to this talk. Who was talking? I said, Baba, Slams and Gustaji's brother was talking. What were you talking about? Huh? Oh, nothing much, Baba. We were talking about spirituality and God and what not. Oh, very good, very good. You were talking about spirituality, huh? All right. Go on. Lift up your bag and baggage. From this second onward, that make that man your guru. You won't get anything from me. Go on. <laughs> stuck. Mm. Very strict were those days, mind you. We dare not do anything untoward during that time. So when he says, come on, come on, don't stand there, come on, make a move, take your bed and bedding, go on. From this second onwards, make that man your guru. So I just rattled myself and I said, no, Baba, you won't go, please forgive us. The other also joined. He says, look, you are following me for the last one year. I have promised you that I am your guru. I won't let you sink. Why did you go there? I am warning you, never, never go to anybody as long as you are with me. He might mislead you. He might say something to you. I am not saying whether he is perfect or not, but never, never go to anybody. So often I had a time, I had an occasion to go to Pune, and Baba Jan was on my way to, on the way to my house. I would ask him then also, Baba, may I go and see Baba Jan? Of course, you shall see. Go on. There you would boldly say, go and see. But nobody would dare ask that should I go expressly to see Baba Jan or Upasri Maharaj? Mm. But because I was going to Pune and Baba Jan on the way, pay my respects. Alas, that's all. You definitely say, yes, go. <laughs> so, did you go to Baba Jan? Yes, I did. And did I always used to. I always used to. And she knew who you Just, were? She... Now, uh, as you say, she must be knowing definitely, because she being a perfect Yes, mind. but no, did she make it uh, known to you that she knew that you were with Baba? Well, neither me made it, uh, neither I made it known to her that I come from Merwan or Mer Baba, nor she said that you are from him. That's all. I paid my respects, sat down for 5, 10, 15 minutes, went home. And while coming back again to Bombay, I'd again bow down and come back. So, Manzali Meem gave us the uh, lesson in obedience. So at that time he had said that you will always follow me wherever I go. These are the orders. 
Baba once says that I am going to Sakori. I'll leave for Sakori tomorrow. And you all stay here. All right, we looked into each other's faces, looked into each other's eyes. Now what should we do? Baba says that we, I'm going to Sakori and you stay here. Whereas he has ordered us that wherever I go, you should follow me. What should we do? Well, the day comes, the day arrives. It's about seven o'clock in the evening when he has got to catch the train to go to Sakori. Baba leaves Manzile Mean. The Mandali just start following him. After having gone about a hundred steps, Baba looks over his shoulders and he says, Go back. Go back. I'm going to Sakori. We just halt in our tracks. We look at each other's faces. Now, what should we do? Should we obey the first order, follow me whenever, wherever I go, or go back? He said, come on, let's go. Somebody suggested, we started moving. We started moving again. Baba again walks about 50 steps and looks over his shoulder. I told you to go back, didn't I? Come on, go back. Then we all turn back. Now here is the point. How would you follow the Master? Which order would you follow? Both are his orders. In the first instance he has said that you follow me wherever I go. Right? And in the second instance he says go back. Then once we tried to, we got it clarified, Baba, we, you put us in a dilemma. What should we do? Sometimes you give us an order contrary to the first. What should we follow? He said the, you follow the last. You follow the last word of mine. We remember that. So, <coughs> uh, so, one the lesson in obedience and the other following the Master. It has been impressed so much so on my head that I have never tried to approach any Master and I have approached only Babajan and when we had gone to Pasni Maharaj when Baba himself sent to us. In 1923, before we came down to Merazat, Baba undertook a trip, or maybe after we came to Merabad and we went back to Bombay, then we went to Iran also. We were shuttling back and forth and I lost the time. Anyway, during that time, I was not with that mandali, I was not with the group because I was given a job, I was serving somewhere. But the mandali, Baba and the mandali left Bombay to go to Sakori on foot. Come on, we are going to Sakori. I was told to join later. I joined him later on. The meeting of the mandali only, Baba is not to see him. Remind me about Upasni Maharaj's meeting, eh? I'll tell you the right story too. The ne flowers were there the next day. Baba says, go on. Go and see Upasni Maharaj. Have his darshan and come back. All right, we all were in great high spirits. We are going to see Upasni Maharaj. We all go there with all flowers and everything. As soon as we go there, naturally there is that orderly who passes the message that Mayor Baba's Mandali has come and has come to for your darshan. Maharaj flies, shrieks, tell those people to get out, get out. 
They have not obliged me by walking from Bombay to Sakori on foot. Tell them to get out. I'm not seeing them. Well, here again we are stuck. Baba has said, take Maharaj's darshan, see him, come back. Maharaj here says, get out. <laughs> what do we do? All right. We again became statue. Talk to myself, amongst ourselves. What do we do? Let us go back. Oh no, we can't do that. Well, how, what do we answer to Baba? Should we tell him that we didn't see Maharaj and came back? That would be breaking the order. But then Maharaj refuses to see us. Well, we got to obey him too. Well, let us wait and see. So for half an hour or something, we just all stood there. We didn't budge. We, ne we didn't go. We stood there. Maharaj was just digging a uh, a bed, a lime lime tree bed. He was digging that bed. He started doing his own work again, the labor, digging up the earth. And after a time, he throws his shovel back, and he just signs, "Come here." All right. But mind you, we all are frightened lest we get good, good clobbering from him. Mm. We all go there, garland, bow down, sit down. What do we find? How do we find Maras? Absolute sweetness. Absolute sweetness. Oh, you have come from Merwana. Very good. Very good. Whatever I had, I have given it to him. Follow him. Then he looks at individuals and he says, Oh, you have come often to Sakori, haven't you not? Yes, Maharaj. Then another, then another. Then you just pass remarks. Oh, no, this is the first time I'm seeing you. In like manner, he just acquainted himself with all the mandali. Then again he enjoins. All of you were there on this? Yes, all the mandali. He enjoins and says, All right, follow him, follow Merwan. Whatever I had is with him. He will not let you sink. All right, go now. So we bow down, leave the place. Come back again. Now, every time the whole narration, narration of the whole trip has been, is to be given to Baba, what happened right from the beginning till the end, you don't miss anything, Baba would like to know. So, he says, what was Maharaj doing in the beginning when you went there? You just tell me. You have told me the incident, but what was he doing when you saw him first? Yes, Baba, we stood outside first and sent the message and that at that time Maharaj was digging one bed. He says, you remind me about this act of a perfect master. You remind me tomorrow. I'll tell you what the significance of this is. Well, the narration was given, the whole history of the trip was given and the issue was closed there. The next day, the man who was told to remind Baba reminds Baba, and Baba says, Yes. It's with the perfect masters that they should always be occupied. They should always occupy themselves in the gross with any, just anything. Just anything. Or they would drop the body and be merged in their own selves. That's why they keep themselves occupied with just with anything. Just talk with anybody, play or work, just anything of the gross. Otherwise, if they are, say, free for a second, they would like to go, drop the body and go away. Mm. This is the significance. Maharaj was not doing that uh, digging for nothing. This has got to be done. And this is the point. So Baba also 
when alone, you know, he would also get some story read or paper read or talk mm. with anybody or play cards or just anything. Constantly. That was his habit. <laughs> so, the point is, you asked me the question that why do the masters do such and such a thing? You just have no answers for it unless the master himself explains. But a disciple, but the slave dare not ask the king why. Why that way? That's the rule. That's the law. The disciple never, never questions the master. Then there was another thing that we wanted to uh, say something just about a few minutes ago. Uh, Do you remember Mohammed? Oh, about Muhammad coming here? Muhammad was brought by Aloba from Bombay. Baba used to send down people, go on, get a must. Get a must. Bring a must down to me. And bringing a must or dislodging a must from his habitat uh, was an ordeal. Was an ordeal. He wouldn't leave. And the people round about him would not let him go. Why are you taking him? Mm. No, we are taking him for our brother there. Why can't your brother come here? <laughs> huh? Well, we never had to give the identity of Baba, remember? During our travels also, no. never, never would give the identity of Baba. Baba said, no, don't say that. Say anything you want. Say, I am the brother, anything. We are going to pilgrimage, mm -hmm. we are going to Mecca, we are going to Medina, anywhere. We've read about this in the Wayfarers, Dara, if you remember. But, um, uh, Padre Uncle, tell us um, why Baba uh, kept Mamma here. The others that he had, he worked with and then he sent them uh, back. Yeah, he sent them back. Why was Mamma kept? Did he ever explain? Did he ever say why? I cannot say that. That's the game of the lover and the beloved. I cannot say anything why he did. It is strictly between the lover but and the But Muhammad beloved. is the only one whom he has only kept with one. him all the time yes. ever since he has come. Yes. And from the news that we hear, heard many times, many of the old mass whom Baba had contacted, many had dropped their bodies. They, they were old. Hmm. Well, everybody just conks out, no doubt. So. They they passing they passing away or dropping their bodies is nothing unusual. No. So anyway, we heard about this man, about that man. You know, Baidul would get the information or Kaka would get the information. We would just ask. In such and such a place, there is such and such a man. Is he there still? No. They would say that no, he's dead. A man from that particular town, if he came hmm. of the town of the Mast, we just ask him. We would like to know, you know. He would say that he's dead or he's gone, he has left the place. <coughs> uh, <coughs> when did uh, Baba decide to have his uh, uh, tomb here in Merabad? Mm. Yes. In the thirties, Prem Ashram boys were lodged in that big building there. It had no first story there. That is the ground floor and the first story, as we call it. The one that is up now, the upper structure was not there. Then, during that time, Baba was in seclusion. Again, he had secluded himself. But he would come and sit at the window. But he would never step out of the room. What he took was according to his wish, tea, coffee, cha, anything. So that room was a seclusion room and there was a pit in that room which Baba had got made. It already existed then. 
So when we, when Baba ordered us to raise a story on this building for the arrival of the Westerners in 1938, he then told us that pull this building down and on the same place build a structure, a tomb-like structure where my body will lie. I'll lie down here, I'll remain constantly here. That's when it was built in 1938. So, the pit was converted to a crypt. There were side walls of the crypt and the walls of the tomb. Then when that room, when the first uh, the room was built, it was not very strong. But this we got very strongly built. And then later on, after it was nearing completion, Baba said that get four emblems of the religions, Hindu, Muslim, Christian and Zoroastrian, put it on all four corners. Nobody could make it here, it was gotten from Bombay, cast in uh, concrete, mm. raised up with crane and Hoist put, hoisted there and put. And then later on, you see, Baba always retired for the night in a separate room altogether. In the beginning, he didn't have any uh, man wide awake. Suppose you can call him the night watchman, but he would sleep, he was allowed to sleep. But in later years, he was not allowed to sleep at all. So, there was a night watchman constantly there. Once Baba says that I want a cabin for me to sleep, for me to retire for the night quietly, I want one cabin built. He calls me, Pendu, and shows his desire, I want a room here. Yes, Baba. We'll build it. How big? He just points on the ground, left and right, width and breadth. I said, Baba, that is no dimension. You just tell us, how much do you want? How big? He, he, asked, he on the, uh, asked a question in return, how, how big do you think should I have? Well, whatever you want. Now here is a point. I'll deviate. When the master questions, you answer him, even if it is contradictory. Now he asked the question, how big a room should I have? First you may say as much as you want. He said, no. Don't say that. What do you think? How big a room is good enough for me? Yeah, you may give any dimension. You see, he invites your comments. There you, may, there you may tell him. But once he has said that you build a room of this dimension, no departing from it. So, it's all right, Baba. Now, till those years, we had been building houses of tin and bamboos. So I entreated Baba, Baba, please. Let us build this time some room, one room at least solid. Yes, certainly. Padre, you're talking nice now. You're talking something. Go on, go ahead. Build one excellent room for me. How many days will you take? Baba, give me three months. I'll give you a good building. You want one room, doesn't matter. But if you want it built good, I must have some time, no rush work, no contractor's job. All right, you have 90 days, go on, build it. I was jubilant that for the first time in my life, I'm getting something, I'm building something now. All these days we built bamboo houses and tin houses, now there will be something built. But I yet don't know what, whole, the, what the future holds for me. All right, we start working, we start aligning, we give the, he gives the measurement, start digging the foundation, 
and start building it. In one week, Baba comes back to me. He says, Padri, how many days did you say you would build the house, this room? I said, Baba, don't you remember? I told you the three months. Uh, quietly, calmly and serenely tells you, can't you build it in less of time than that? Now I knew that he is up to his antics now. He wants to clip off the days. Well, Baba, I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I didn't commit myself. I'll make it as soon as possible. Well. But tell me the time. I want to sit in, the, uh, in this room. I want to seclude myself in this room so that I should adjust my time. Well, two and a half months, Baba. Right, go ahead. Two and a half months. That is, he has already clipped off 15, 15 days. days. After another eight days he comes, Padi, can't you make it two months? <laughs> I said, Baba, Baba, look now, you give me the at least two and a half months and you, I'm going to build for you one good room, at least let me build it. We have had plenty of bamboos and tins now. This is one for you. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not discouraging you from building it, but I would like to know whether you can do it in a shorter time, that's all. I'm not discouraging you. I'm not trying to clip off the days. Can't you try? Mm, yes, Baba, I can try. One month knocked off. After another 15 days, he comes, Padre, look, on a certain day, I want to seclude myself and I want the room ready. Now you better give up your idea of building a stone masonry house and get me something immediately on that particular day and that was only one week away. Now you can't build that stone room, you know. Mm. The one we wanted to build, you know. A good one. All right. He says if you don't give me on that particular day, it's no use. I want to seclude myself. My work is... I have got some very important work to do. I forgot everything. Ran up to Nagar, got wood and started building structure in wood. And on the eighth day, when the last nail is being driven home at about five o'clock in the evening, Baba steps into the cabin and takes up his abode. Now here is a point. He himself said that that if you do not keep my wish and give me what I want, it's no use, <coughs> no use your working with other aims in your mind. It's my work. So don't worry. Just don't worry. Don't get disheartened because this building was not built. I am thoroughly satisfied with it. I will seclude myself and my work will go on. Go on. Go down. Come on. Don't halt here. Come on. Take your tools and go back. Immediately chased us out. Soon as he went into the cabin, he chased us all out. Mm. Because that was the women's zone, you know. Mm. Come on. Get out. <coughs> and when he secluded himself, or when the night watchman went up to take his guard, you would always go by the same way we go to the tomb now, not through the gate, not through the compound. Strict orders. You would go out and just stand there, sit near the cabin. This is it. The ways of the Master are very, very clear. We just do not know. Bolo? Which is this cabin? Baba's cabin where the stretcher is now? Mm. But he also uh, secluded himself in the crypt, didn't he? <coughs> yes. And went on a very long fast where his coffee was carried up uh, to the ah, yes. boy uh, who <laughs> used to drink up a part of it. Yes. You see, during that time the women were here near the po in the post office. They were living there and we were living in that other house there. 
and Baba had secluded himself in that big stone building. And Baba had told the uh, women Mandali that at about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, give me one, th send me one thermos full of coffee. One day the coffee comes less, not a thermos full. For a few days the coffee was thermos full. Then it became less and less and less and less. Baba didn't say in the beginning. Then one day he says, why he sends message to the women, why are you sending the coffee half a thermos full? No, Baba, we send you a full thermos. Does it get lost on the way? Then it, uh, that boy, that orderly boy who was carrying the thermos was called. He was a youngster, about 10 or 12 years old. Baba tells him, come on, tell us the truth. Did you drink coffee out of that? <laughs> yes, Baba, I just drank it on the way and brought the rest to you. <laughs> uh, so, can you hear those bullocks? Yes. Mm. How many years now you hear Baba? Here. In the 30s, we, start, we didn't move after the 30s, you know, after coming from Bangalore. Yeah. Till we went to Bangalore, we shuttled back and forth in many places. I think it is in 33. No, I'm sorry. Nasik. Huh? Oh, gosh. 39. Uh, when did the Second World War start? 39. 39. Mm. So on that uh, during that time we were in Bangalore. Then we stayed for about uh, I don't know almost a year. Where in Bangalore? There are two or three places you know allotted to the uh, Mandali. The women used to stay in the links. We used to stay on Palace Road, and Adi used to stay in some place you know, not not being sufficient for us all. They were spread out. And then after that, after breaking up Bangalore camp, <coughs> where we had a must camp too, very fine must we had there, very fine must. And there are many pictures, action pictures of Baba, <coughs> which I had taken in Bangalore. And Muhammad was also there. They were all carried, all these must and mad people you were, they were carried in train by Sidhu. <coughs> and <laughs> it was, for him it was an ordeal, but for the must it was fun. <coughs> so, What more do you want now, Dara? Go on, your bullocks are on. Hmm? 